You haven't. everybody and Peaky Dippers we've come on another adventure today I'm not going to tell you where it is yet but it is the birthplace of Oliver Cromwell oh Maria you might have to put that in the video <laughs> but, uh, yeah uh, we thought we'd come and have a little fish of this whole bridge goes back to 1202 so let's have a little look at this I'd like to give a big shout out to Reuben and his mum cat because uh, we've sent them a little magnet but uh, I tell you what, he's a little professional in him, right? He is. He is. So I'll go and like and subscribe to Ruben's channel. I will try and put a link on the group when I found out the name of the channel and everything. Yeah, so we're going to go and eat that. We wait for Kirsty and Michael. I need coffee. And uh, we wait for Steve because he's coming from up to Moors somewhere. So he'll be here soon as well. So let's go and see what we can get. Oh, look at that. <laughs> what? Big horseshoe. Ooh. Got a nice big horseshoe there, guys. Look at that. Food throwing. Got a scaff clamp as well, as usual, isn't it? But I should give that to Alison, because Alison's coming today and she collects horseshoes. So let's go into our Alison, isn't it, Marie? Yeah. Just checking my crook, guys, on this uh, old scaff clamp. There's nothing on there. No coins yet. I say yet. We've got a piece of plate. We've got a an angle off one of them cauldrons of some kind there. I'll tell you what, all the right stuff's coming out so far, guys. I feel like some kind of a hammer. So Marie just found that, guys, so we'll check that out in a minute. Uh, let it dry out, it's crud. It's too heavy to be in what you're thinking. Okay. <laughs> it could be some type of different cannonball that we don't know of. Ooh. I don't know, because there is some really weird ones I've been researching. So we'll check that out in a minute, guys. Let it dry out. Good point, Marie. We've got that thing, so we'll take that back and clean that up. Not too sure what that is. Got a piece of plate. an old cut throat there guys, look at that. That's nice, that's an old uh... <laughs> Oh lovely. And I've got I don't look at that for an old one, Glacklin. Oh yeah. That's that's, that's an old scall picture. that's scalloped, uh, what they call scalloped, so it's uh and what early. Is that? <laughs> yeah. Big chunk of metal. Not sure what that is. Well, indefinitely on the all shoes today. I've got another one. Oh my god. There's lots of all shoes in here. Oh, you got Mike. Sovereign. Oh, that's weird, isn't it? 
No, 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 it's not a horseshoe. It would be a tiny horse if it was. My little but, partner. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to stay along the theme of today by the looks of it, because we just got here and there's been three or four horseshoes pulled up. So that's my smallest one. Yeah, piece of strap in. We've got that big nut, whatever it is, I'll smack that off in a minute just to check. We've got a washer, bottom of a tin, and some nails. An unbox, a lantern. Ooh! Uh, oh, we'll save the glass out of it. Yeah, the handle's come off, but the glass, as you can see, is still intact. So. Yeah. I've just gone to the right of this bay here, first row in. A nice big axe head, look at that! That is lovely, that! That's probably uh, got a bit of age to it as well, that one. Nice! The curse he's pulled up is the World War II soldier bike. I forget the name of him now. What was it, the Curse? Was originally made by Rally, wasn't he? Yeah. Curse Day. You said what it was, didn't you? It's a, the cyclist's battalion bike. Oh. The headquarters was just there. Oh. So we might get so. more out. There we go. Might uh, get one in a better condition. Yeah, I'd like a Leon Look at field. that. <laughs> Got four by four tyres on, though. <laughs> in 1887, the wheels of innovation were set in motion with the establishment of the first bicycle unit within the volunteer force. As the world plunged into the chaos of the First World War, the importance of bicycles in the military soared to new heights. Cyclist battalions played a pivotal role in reconnaissance, communication and patrolling duties. Their speed and mobility were invaluable, often seeing them attached in larger formations where they operated in support of infantry units. With the echoes of war fading, many cyclist battalions were disbanded as a focus turned to more motorised transport. Yet their legacy lived on. The lessons learned from these pedal-powered pioneers contributed to the development of mobile warfare concepts in the decades that followed. As the world found itself embroiled in the flames of the Second World War, the role of bicycles in frontline combat diminished. So as we pedal forward into the unknown, let's carry with us the spirit of those who once rode into history on two wheels. So just a little dinky lock, padlock. Might oh, have a link or an old key on it. I'm not sure. Well, I've just pulled up these. Can't fit them off a car. You can see there may be little plaques because I've got little screw holes there and there. To show you the other one as well. I hope you can see it okay. But yeah, there's lots of them. So could take them back and clean them off and see what they are. It's a tricycle. Good try. That is mad. That is what do you need? There's something in the bag here yeah, as well. It's like a little bike, isn't it? I think there's a magnet in there like this. Oh, what's that? It's a... Huh? It's attached to that <laughs> Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Love a cup for our riser. That's the second one I've had out today. These have got to be... Uh, army... Army type... Uh, war, army war type. And I've had... Uh, Old screwdriver as well, the wood spit on that look guys. <laughs> Get that? 
sorry if it's a bit loud folks but we are on a bridge where the shop is going to and from So I don't know if you can see that. Got a big office chair. Oh. Steve! Huh? I found your basket for your office bar. So I've got another horseshoe. That's gonna be probably about the fifth one now. So Alison's going back with a lot of horseshoes today. Pulled out a nice little fruit knife. Nice and silver. And what the silver? Actually silver. Could be. Could be. Because it's Jack's Wolf blade that it was stuck to. It's got some nice little engraving on here. It's really nice, nice and pretty. Dainty. Lovely. <laughs> no, it's not one in white. Yeah? Steve! <laughs> it's a white, it's the one in white I think. Pendulum white. Yeah, it is one. It's got the oak and everything on this one. So, uh, I forgot to show you guys, bear with me. So I had another one of these pendulum weights and apparently they're very sought after. So that's my second one. Well, Marie's had one, I've had the other one. This is an antique butcher's steel yard weight. A cast iron weighing instrument dating to the late 18th century. Large steel yard balances, known as cart balances, were a common feature in agricultural areas in England from the 18th century, but some can even date back to ancient Rome. The weight can be moved along the arm until the two arms are balanced, at which time the weight of the load is indicated by the position of the counterweight. It's I just found that. Not sure what it is. I don't think it's anything medieval, to be honest. <laughs> it could be like a key, a ring for keys. You never know. Now Glenn said that, then again. <laughs> Piece of horseshoe again. Got a load of bits of nails. Got like that ratchet thing. I got one very similar on my magnet fishing box. Um, load of nails again as usual which will vacuum up with the uh, magnet lighter. It looks like a piece of uh, brass pipe in there. Um, I say brass, it's, it's magnetic. That piece is brass in the middle, look. More than that. Well, I've never seen that before. So, is it a drill bit? Not sure. Oh, another one of them guys. That's uh, the second one I've had that there. Got like a cut in it. Don't know what they are. I've not got a clue, but I'm going to take them back. See if I don't, that'll probably be something good. The seemingly small item that Glenn found turned out to be small weights, crucial cogs in the machinery of O's reproduction. And just a step away, the silent witness to their story stands tall.
the Old Mill, built in 1847 and enlarged in 1860. It began its journey as a flour mill, but in 1924 a new chapter unfolded. The hum of machinery and the rhythmic click of knitting needles echoed within its walls as Klinger Stern knitting mills came into being. So there it is, the old mill, a forgotten treasure, where once the small weights danced upon the osiery machines. Take a breath Let me be a part of something real mm-hmm. Someone said it's better when You hold on to a helping hand Sometimes we could all use a friend here to Huntington to find a can of lager from Bertrand Trent. But I ain't never seen a can like that before. It's an old one because it's the old pull tab but there's no real logo on it as such so I don't know what make it is. It's some on the back there, a brewery. Bertrand Trent. Bertrand Trent. Coop Limited. Something Coop Limited. Fifteen and a half. Fluid ounces, so that's going back sometimes. See there, look. Yeah, that's an old can, isn't that it? That is very old, yeah. That's well old, that one. Probably just under a pint, isn't it? Uh, I'd say about half. About half. I don't know, but it's the old pull top. I found that. What a good Oh, this is a friend. I took mine down there. Oh, is that nice? Where? Oh, I thought A bench chisel. A bent chisel. I thought you said a bent chisel. <laughs> right guys. I'm saying Paul. Lock. Oh, yeah. Big key. Not an, I don't think the key's too old, but still a nice one. It's it's older than you think, sir. Yeah, give yeah. it a lock the clean up as well. Nice. Well look at that. I've just pulled out a toilet chain, it's still got the handle on. A toilet chain? A toilet chain. <laughs> she has as well. I bet that's come out of the MOD building. I bet it has. Ooh, Sorry, it's toilet chain. Oh, that's a nice handle. We'll yeah. clean that up. I'm not sure if the handle's magnetic, or it's just a giant hole. I don't know, we'll see. So, I like it. <laughs> Hold it up then, Alison. Look at this, guys. Her second trip out. And she's got her first ever horseshoe. She's over the moon. <laughs> she's well pleased. Right guys, I got this piece of bar here, but as you can see, there's a full vertebrae on there. 
Glenn loves old bones, so he's going to take that back and research it and see what animal it came off. Interesting. And I've also had a bite lock, a scaffold tube, a few bits of scrap. I've had a very stiff wibbly wobbly that doesn't wibble or wobble anymore. And I've had a letter J. And that is in British Army Green. There's green army paint showing through, so I don't know what that's off. You haven't! Is that a bayonet? No. It what is! That's, yes! That's a sword. That's a small sword. Glad! No. It is, that's a small sword. Yeah. There's a pommel. Uh, oh there's... Goodness, that's not, this is um It's not a bayonet, is it? No, this is Oliver Cromwell time. This is a uh, 1500. Oh, oh, no, I swear oh. to you, I swear to you. See that? I was reaching. I was going to say that, that's yeah. an unusual, um, mm -hmm. what do you it call is. it? Oh. Oh. Look at this. You said that. Oh, who's put that out? Oh wow! Fantastic. I was researching Fantastic swords last night, well, and yeah. I've got a funny feeling this is fifteen hundreds. You see the line going down the middle. I'll get it up on Google later, and I'll show you. I'll show you oh. what it's not quite a saber. It's got some curve onto it, but it's a short sword. Good that. Excellent job. It's still got the bloodline in as well. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Happy with that. The history is coming. Um, short Horseman's That's right. Cavalry yeah. Short Sword. Yeah. 1500s Cavalry Short Sword? I think so, yeah. Wow. I need to research it, but that blade's in really good condition. Wow. Nice one. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is lovely. Horrifying. Well happy with that. Short Swords became the weapon of choice for cavalry, offering the perfect blend. Mounted warriors throughout history faced unique challenges on the battlefield and in the midst of chaos, manoeuvrability was key. With thunderous hooves and the clash of steel, short swords with their compact design were ideal for swift and precise strikes in the close quarter chaos of mounted combat. Oh my God, I think that's an axe. Now I can tell you something now guys, if that is an axe head, that would be mega old. I'm going to keep that, we'll check that out. Right, well that's the rear pannier off an old uh, army bike, MOD push bike, what the saddlebags would have attached to. Could be part of an ammo crate. Oh, I don't know. Line up there. A bit far gone, really, though, yeah, to tell. Shame, it's not army. It's not an ammo crate. No. I don't know. <sighs> Might be a rider this or no? So put put it in here. Right under the middle arch. 
What have you got, Glenn? I've got a Panda Coca-Cola. Oh my lord, Panda Pops. Oh god. That's the 70s, isn't it? 70s, here we are. Panda Cola. Yeah, and uh, it would be nice if the date was on the bottom, but it's not. Slippery neck, I can just about remember Panda Pops. Hey, oh. No, Rabbini. I've got another part to that. Have you? <laughs> it's all right. It's like um, plain plants, don't they? That's weird. So I've just had this out and I've had that part out earlier, which looks like it's part of it. That's a cover for it, look. Does that slide out the top? No, there's no way of it going over. It bolts on. That's a weird one. Oh, I've got one of them things my cat. No, I ain't. I know what that is. Them little, um... Yeah, for shooting uh, bolts through steel. That's it. Used to have, a, have to have a firearms license to use them. They've got little E's on them, haven't they? Yeah. Letter E on the end of them. All use them ones out. Another one. Yeah, these were like percussion caps for shooting bolts into steel. Let's see, what's he got? Let me see. What have got? That's a lovely one. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh! I've got a, a bolt. <laughs> I'm going to drop it back in. <laughs> look, look at, at that! that. That's a beast. That's a big naughty. That is a big naughty. Look at that beast. Oh my oh, word. that's stuck up here in an alleyway, would you? Think of better things. <laughs> look at that. That's a beast. And a scaff clamp. But that's a beast. That's good off the street. I'll cut that up. We've got another scaff clamp and a piece of bar. Well, it is metal, it's got a hinge lid. Oh! It's hollow there, it's got a little bit of a... But it has writing on the lid, and it says 2OZ, which is, in England, it's 2 ounce. So... That's unusual, isn't it? It is. Oh, I originally thought it was a, an old war lighter holder case. It could be. But I'm not too sure. Was ounce about then? <laughs> was ounce about then? I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> no. Yes, pounds and ounces. Oh, so that's unusual. Do a bit of research. If anyone's got any ideas, let us know in the comments below. Thank you. Used to have. It's a Roman 
box. Tax collection box. Yes. For the Romans. Don't listen to Steve he keeps bursting my bubble. But I'll tell you what, to be fair, it's solid enough. Might take that back because that, that might clean up really well, to be fair, that. It will because it's solid metal, isn't solid, it? Solid, yeah. yeah. Well, there's one hole of a fear I've seen. Where? There. No, it's there, look. That's a, there on purpose. Is it a keyhole? Are you sure? Well, I've got a great. Unfortunately, the only way I can get this open is by breaking it close. I've got a lot of bullets again. Time to use my axe. Is it two bucks you found? Down here, otherwise you're going to lose everything. Oh, yeah, it's open. Oh, it's going in there. I was going to say, it's just splashing up, so sorry guys if it's on the camera. <laughs> Sounds solid. Look, a brick in there or something? <coughs> grenade. It's a bloody grenade. <gasps> Shit! Isn't it? Yeah! Oh no! It is, it's a grenade. Oh. What's a grenade doing in a box? <laughs> and I'm there smacking it. <laughs> A grenade in a box and I'm smacking the box open and it's a grenade. Yeah, it's is it live? A grenade in a box. There's the base plug look. It is. Oh, you're really? Gonna leak, you're going to leak in bullet caps. Oh, oh. the light to me, boy. That's an old one, that. Yeah, it's a Oh, look at that. Military, yeah. yeah. Oh, don't worry about my grenade then. This <laughs> is the, um, yeah, the Psychist Battalion, boy. Oh, oh wow. Well. It's actually World War One. So amazing. Lovely fun. Lovely. What a fishing little spinner. It is cursed. I like a little lock there. I've got a lovely old key there. Try and age that so it's been melted. Oh my lord, that's old. Beautiful, yeah, that was that. Yeah, I was looking at the keys with the night and uh, these here are with, with the, the, the nice design, potentially 1700s-ish, that yeah. one. Believe it or not, that's the first big nice old key I've ever done. There you go. So, there you go, nice find. Right guys, another big lovely old key. I like cursed key, but I'm going to have to go in the cursed bot. Lovely. Beautiful key, Kirst. Mm. Some reason just found that, that's a weird shape. We'll take that back and clean it up. I ain't got a clue. Now it's some kind of light fitting over. We'll clean that up. So I had that on the AT. <coughs> and the magnet went right in the middle of it. Took me about 10 minutes to get it off. No wrap But I got it off in the end. What you got, cursed? It's a key day for me today. I'm Is it? <laughs> look at that one. It's in the crud, but you can make it out. Look oh, the pattern. look. Amazing. Oh, beautiful. Mm, got a little, it's a 9mm bullet tip there. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, Not bad. Nice. And these are the beautiful keys once Kirsty has cleaned them all up. Oh. 
What is it? It's not that <laughs> <laughs> No. I don't want to break you. Shouldn't be uh, tapered like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It is a bird. You know what you're just kidding yourself a found. Well. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I've not got a clue. We thought it was an artery, but we're not too sure. So, uh, I'm going to take it back. Don't know. No rude comments, you guys. After speaking to various historians, this item has been identified as a medieval hand cannon. And this is now the second one that Glenn has found. These early hand cannons were like small tubes with a touch hole, marking the birth of firearms technology. By the 14th century, hand cannons had evolved from rudimentary tubes to more refined and deadly instruments. These early firearms offered a new level of firepower, capable of piercing armour and changing the dynamics of medieval warfare. Soldiers armed with hand cannons became a force to be reckoned with, reshaping the strategies and the tactics of the time. What a find, Peaky. What's I got? She's got her first ever bullet. Oh. And she's super excited, aren't you? Do your excited <laughs> face. Go on. Go on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've got an old padlock there, look, guys. And uh, I know Alison likes these, so uh, Alison will have that one as well. That's quite nice, you know. Put that up in your kitchen. Nice, Alice. It's trying to cock on a fell up. Oh, three oh, a piece of shot. Three nine mils. Three is a magic number. No. Is that a piece of shot as well? No, a little uh, rusty nut. A rusty nut? <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> so, 2021. So, oh. I don't know what else is in there. Now, I promised Alison a kid. And I've got her one. <laughs> She's over the moon with me. So, don't lose that, Alison. That's probably 1900, that one. Then we've got, I've just pulled out, in between the crud and a magni, I pulled out that. I don't think it is, God. It could be plated, I ain't too sure. But, it's, it's not, not ma magnetic. Oh. So, I don't know. Probably just copper nine my look, but we'll, you know. And I've got, I. Bullet, and I realised it wasn't a 9mm like the rest of them had, it's a 45, look how fat that one is. Oh yeah. So, it's a bit too like a big gun, like a Smith & Wesson or something like that, that will. Yeah. So there you go. Oh, right. What a cog, I think it is. It's a, a nice one. And, I think, it's possibly a lid of something. if Ben wants to uh, tap the crud off that and, uh, you know, have a look. But, uh, sorry if you've been mainly in pawn position today. I've tried to capture some of the finds coming out. Um, it is a difficult bridge to <laughs> film off. So, yeah, I hope it's been okay for you. Well, it's been a brilliant day again. I found nothing. We <laughs> found something. I found the best find of the day. Yeah. Yeah. It's had some brilliant finds. Yeah. It's been a wonderful day though. Brilliant place. Brilliant people. We've had uh, permission to go and fish another section of land on private yes. land. So, what more can you ask for? We might come back. We might come back. We're, we're going to leave it a couple of weeks because we've got some more ideas. But, yeah, I think we're definitely going to come back here. Um, and in some respects, we hope it like, not floods, but we hope it pushes a little bit more because we've cleared this area, so we could do some more being pushed down. Yeah, we could. Mm. But it's been a brilliant day. Excellent. So don't forget, like and subscribe, share the videos if you can, because it really helps us get further afield. 
We love you all. Without you, we're nothing. So thank you from all of us at the Peaky Dippers. We'll catch you on the next one. I'll see you on the phone. Bye for now. Bye. The Fines Roundup. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Big here. Thank you for coming and joining us on the premiere again tonight. And we had a lovely, lovely day in Huntington. Oh, we right? did. It was a lovely place. Yeah. Um, it was a bit dodgy to follow the draw, and it was a bit windy that day, but we managed to get it up. So I do apologise, but you have got some drown footage on there that you've seen. Beautiful area. And we had some history out of there as well. Oh, yes. Well, you especially. We had the army bike, the rally, yeah. that came out there, didn't it? I'm um, just trying to think of a few things that came out. Yeah, and, and a Mike's bayonet. No, not bayonet, sword. Short yes, sword. it's a sword. It's a short sword. We've, we've got the closest identification to it. Put it in the video. Huh? What? Have you put the sword in the video? Yeah, the sword's in the video. Of course it's the sword in the video. Where it might be. No, because there's a couple of things that it could be. Right, so it, it could be, we, we are looking at Civil War 1640s for that sword. Uh, but unfortunately, Michael's sword was missing the part of the hilt and the handle. So it's made it very, very hard to uh, to ID. But it will still look nice hanging on a wall yeah. if he treats it nice and oils it up and, you know, and it stays in one piece. Right, so I will show you what we've had. Let's, where shall I start? Volkswagen cap. Oh, we had a Ford last time. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, it's falling to bits. Oh. <laughs> really, yeah. Volkswagen cap, plastic. I've not got a clue how they've pulled that up. Uh -huh. One of them's pulled it up. I've not got a clue. Then we pulled... I pulled up this. Now, I thought this was a waiter first and I've cleaned it all off. It's, it's a really, really old magnet. Oh, is it? Yeah. But it's not very magnetic, so oh, yeah, that came up and I had to clean it just to check. But yeah, just a, an old, old magnet, so that I go in the bin, that, even, that isn't even worth giving to somebody. Then, this come up in the crud, well, I'll say in the crud, attached between some crud and the magnet. That. But, it is too much like copper. It's not magnetic. It's too much like copper, I think it's just a really cheap uh, bracelet. Then we've got, now, we was fishing outside of a, it was, it was RAF MRD for a little bit, like, from the war. But before then, it was a nosery mill. Yeah. So it made tights, stockings, socks, all that kind of <laughs> stuff. Hosiery. And on them hosiery machines, the weights... And we managed to get three of the whites. I haven't cleaned mine up. I don't know. But, uh, nah, but uh, I should give these to somebody who I know. But, uh, oh, I'll give them to Alison. So, yeah, uh, there's three of these whites uh, that need cleaning up. I'm not keeping them. Uh, so, yeah. But them off the old hosiery machine. So, that's a little bit of history right there. A little bit of social history. So, that's that. Three of them. I found this, and it's some kind of a chisel, but when I'm putting this, and I'm trying to ide identify this on Google, this is coming up very, very old. Oh. I'm talking very old. Mm, we'll but have to look further into that then. I'm not going to say as old as my star find, for I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> then we've got this. Now, let me know, guys, whether that's part of a drill. Um, Marie pulled this up. But I'm wondering if it's some kind of a concrete drill that you put in concrete and it stirs concrete up. I don't know. It just seems really weird. But uh, yeah, I'll keep that for now until somebody gives me an answer. Because now I might look off right away and it's probably fell off Boudicca's helmet or something. Marie really pulled up the toilet chain. There we go. But you see there, that's where I do a test with a potato knife. Yeah. And it wasn't even worth cleaning up because it's just a ru solid rubber toilet handle. Oh, is it rubber? <laughs> so if that had been ceramic, yeah, I'd have, I'd have cleaned it up and that would have been a nice base. But it's just a, I'd say, 1930s, 1940s toilet chain. All right. Okay? <laughs> For the outside toilets. Yeah. If there was lucky enough to have them. Then I had a big 
accent there look so you've got the sharp point on that side you've got the hammer side there and that's where the wooden handle would have been mounted I have still got a bit more clean up on that to do I haven't come across any writing on that yet usually you might get a company here um, telling you where it's from you know who made it and that then Kirsty, I forgot to give this Kirsty back it is actually Kirsty's found a piece of shot well a grape shot so there you go and I put that in my bucket and I forgot about it Kirsty and then uh, an old knife but from experience I could, from experience I can tap all the crud off that and uh, it'll probably just there'll be nothing left of it but that's the way yeah, that's, that's quite far gone isn't that it that is far gone if I never came out there I'd be amazed we've had an old nail look at now I bought this back the simple reason is Marie hasn't put this history in because it's not Marie's fault it's my fault I should have told her they made some of these letters, uh, not, um, nails into letters. Did they? Yes, so we got, you can have a J, an I. And there was some tradition uh, I was reading about where they used nails. So like say, if I was a medieval person. Right. And I would lost you. Yeah. And your name was Jenny. Yeah. I'd make it into a J and chuck it in the river as a little offering. Oh. Yeah, so I was reading about that. So, oh. I don't know how true it is. I don't know what I've been reading um, on some of these Google sites. But, yeah, uh, it could just be a bent nail. <laughs> what if your name begins with a H? Well, I don't know. I'm not getting involved with that side of it. I pulled up a little square thing. Now, I regret it because I hit it hard. And um, if I'd have known what it was, I'd have gone a lot more gently at it. Is this thing here? Now... This came up here and across and back down, like a square. And I don't know if you've got a close up of this, but on them brass um, circles there, them brass turny things, there's letters. This is an 1890s padlock, combination padlock, but they didn't use numbers then, they used letters. It's actually called an alphabetical padlock. Mm. If you Google it, Alphabet Padlock 1890, it's coming up as. Um, still nice bits of brass to keep with the little letters on, still a nice little piece. But I just wish I'd have gone a lot more gentle with that. That's taught me a lesson. Then we found this, guys. Now, this is a mystery. I cannot find what this is. It's got an owl at the top. I thought it was a little pepper or salt shaker at first. But it can't be because it's got an owl there. But I'm thinking, is it, it's either a light fitting, like a, a, a fer, a, um, like a ferrule kind of thing, or uh, some old, old plums, uh, plum bobs would have had a cork in there that have filled them with sand and they've had a little like, point here, and it's called a scratch plum bob. Is it one of them? I don't know. Mm. There you go. So I don't know. If anyone can ID that. It is okay. nice though. It's, it's nice. nice it's nice design. It's, it's had a lot of work put into it. But the star find. Oh my god, we've got these. Now we've got these plaques all stuck together. I haven't even attempted to clean them yet. I did, oh, I cleaned one, but I couldn't see nothing on it. I don't know if these are off a car or what guys or off a push bike. You, you tell me. Was there any colour to them when you, when you cleaned? Yeah, just was... plain steel colour. Oh. But, uh, I'm going to try and get them apart again. We bought them back just in case there's little plaques of some kind. But uh, I'll have a look. I'll come back to you on that one. If you don't hear off me on that one, then they're just going to in the scrap. But the star find of the day, guys. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Second one I've ever had. Second one I've ever seen in magnet fishing is this thing. There's your barrel. There's... Like the decorative side of the barrel there. There is your taper. It's a bit round on the end, but this would have gone basically into a block of wood with a, a an hole cut out. It would have been stuck in the end of the wood and you'd have had a handle there. And then there would have been some straps go over the top of the barrel holding it there. And this is actually a hands gun, yeah. which is the old, old name for handgun. 
There's so many different ones. Are there there as is well, so isn't many there? different ones, and um, I've had this confirmed, um, and I've got another thing in the museum for next week being confirmed. Um, so I'm waiting on that. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But yeah, so basically, a taper would have gone out. You'd have lit it, and you'd have shot it. You'd have put your ball in, and your gunpowder. That is an handgun. Or a hand cannon. So I've had another hand cannon. So that's now two hand cannons. This has been dated to roughly 14 to 1500. So this is Tudor. Mm. Tudor. I'm over the moon with it. What a lovely piece of history. Beautiful, beautiful. And look at the condition of that. Seems it's five, six years, 600 years old. See? No, next week's video, guys, I'm going to do the giveaway now. Next week's video, oh my god, I thought I got something gold. And then Marie goes and beats me. <laughs> and, I've actually, and I didn't even know at the time. <laughs> I've actually got someone looking at it, and we we are. People are going to probably snigger at this, but potentially Viking. Well, that's what we're all about, history, yeah, isn't it? It is, it is. But it's potentially Viking. I'm just waiting for that person to get back to me with confirmation obviously I've got the museum looking at certain things and the other one I've got is 1300 as I was saying on my live last week so mine's 1300 Marie may have had Viking oh, oh my god oh. so keep your fingers crossed for that and I'll grab the confirmation we need right we're going to do the giveaway I'm not going to do one giveaway I'm going to do two giveaways we're doing two again yeah because I'm feeling generous so Let's get the laptop on here again, guys. So, the first one I'm going to spin for is the Wistery clay pipe bracelet made from clay pipe stems off the Thames. Ooh. And I'm a poet and I didn't know it. <laughs> so, there you go. Let's, so, let's see who's going to win this then. All the wheels, uh, all the wheels, all the names from the live on Sunday will be on the wheel. So, good luck everybody. Good luck everybody. This is for the clay pipe. Whisterer. Let's see who our winner is. Bud oh, Bundy. Bundy. Well done. Excellent Bud. Congratulations Bud. And if you can get your address across to this email yeah. here of Marie's. Yeah. I will get that out to you. Well deserved. Lovely. Buds, buds are lovely. And they are bloke. unisex, both for men and women, aren't they? Yes. So. Buds are lovely bloke and uh, yeah, I okay. can't. Yeah, brilliant. Fantastic. I'm so happy. So now, we've got the second roll. is going to be for a pretend, but it's nice to display. Greek. And let's see if I can. There he is. There's his head. Ancient Greek coin. Look okay, up. so it's just a it's just a pretend um, moulding of one, but it's metal. <laughs> uh, so let's see who's going to win that. Let's remove Bud. Congratulations, Bud. Who's next? Right, let's win the spill. Uh, win the spill. Let's <laughs> win the spill. Spin the wheel for the coin. <laughs> I haven't been drinking. Who's next? Who's next? Tracy Ewerth, well so, done. Tracy Ewerth, you have won the Greek coin, so congratulations to you Tracy, and very deserved because Tracy has done a lot of work for the community. She has. For she the has. treasure hunting, history hunting, magnificent community. Yeah. So it's nice to give a little bit back to Tracy, bless it her. It is. So, yeah, Tracy, uh, I think you actually get on, uh, you, you text Marie, so if you can just private message Marie or get in touch with Marie on the link down below and then we'll send this coin straight out to you, darling. So there we go, guys. As I've said, and I'm sorry to keep you waiting, guys, I'm sorry it's a bit long at the end of the video, but we like to show our finds and when we've got finds like this, you we have got to show them. Um, and next week's video, guys, do not miss it. Ask any of the peakies, next week's is going to be unbeatable, fine-wise, I think. Hopefully, uh, some proper history, 
proper proper history and please so, like share and subscribe like share and subscribe i don't know what marie you remember, <laughs> you remember put it on there now are you? like share and uh, subscribe guys if you haven't already and uh, get this channel shared about we've got some big things coming up i keep saying it end of february guys my god first in magnificent Maybe the first in the treasure hunting community. Oh, could be. It's, I keep calling it treasure hunting. History hunting. hunting community. So uh, it is going to be a first. A definite first. So I can't wait for everybody to know what we're doing. So big love, guys. Big love to everybody uh, abroad. Um, stay safe. That's the main thing. Keep out this cold and the storms. And we should be out the weekend again. And we're trying somewhere else, aren't we, Mira? Yeah. We've been there before, but we're going to try it again. So I'll see you next time, guys. Well, cheer you go.